electrical safety general electrical safety measures warning signs must be placed on doors warning employees of the electrical dangers as well as indicating that only authorized workers are permitted into these rooms do not overload electrical circuits minimize or eliminate the use of multi outlet power strips when power strips are necessary the safety office of the facility or a licensed electrician must approve their use replacing fuses or circuit breakers with overloading devices that that trip at a higher current than specified is a dangerous practice as is replacing overloading devices with a conductor disconnect equipment attached to high voltage or high amperage power sources from the source or provide a lockout device on the breaker box to prevent circuit activation before maintenance is performed because electrical devices can generate sparks do not use them near flammable or volatile gases or liquids never place flammable liquids in a household refrigerator the spark generated by the door activated light switch can ignite fumes trapped in the unit causing an explosion and fire specialized refrigerators must be used when storing chemicals that have explosion potential protective measures for man and machine electrical insulation insulate the conductors example insulation on extension cords rubber and plastic is put on wires to prevent shock fires short circuit and for strain relief it is always necessary to check the insulation on equipment and cords before plugging them in remember even the smallest defect will allow leakage elevate the conductors example overhead power lines wires are often elevated by the power company it's always necessary to check the location of overhead lines before you begin work each day remember never allow yourself your tools or the materials you are working with to be within 10 feet of energized lines guard the conductors by enclosing them example receptacle covers boxes and conduit It's always necessary to check that electrical boxes and panels are covered and free from missing knockouts. Electric equipment operating at 50 volts or more must be guarded. Grounding. Grounding gives the stray current somewhere to go and keeps you from becoming part of the circuit. All electrical laboratory equipment should be earthed or grounded preferably through three-prong plugs. Do not reverse polarity. Grounding will not work if the electricity can flow through you more easily than the ground. This can happen when your tool doesn't have a ground pin, you're working in wet locations, you're touching a metal object. If you do, the electrical fields within the motor are always energized. The prongs are different sized so you can't turn the plug around. If there is moisture present, the case is likely to be hot. even with double insulated tools you still could get a shock what must be grounded all circuits and extension cords all non current carrying metal parts portable and semi portable tools and equipment unless double insulated circuit interruption a circuit breakers and fuses protect the building and equipment from heat build up use circuit breakers and fuses to prevent shock b ground fault circuit interrupter gfci we can be safer by automatically shutting off the flow of electricity in the event of leakage overload or short circuit gfci is the only device that will protect the worker from shock and electrocution All temporary circuits are required to have GFCI protection or equipment and cords must be included in an assured equipment grounding conductor program. Extension cords and cables. An extension cord is a temporary circuit. It must be in good shape without splices. It can't be secured with staples, nails or bare wire. It must be protected from damage. They must have a ground pin. They should regularly be inspected and pulled from service if defective. 
cannot be repaired with electrical or duct tape must repair with heat shrink sleeve or bonding vulcanizing tape to retain original insulation properties safe work practices the management must determine where exposed and concealed electrical circuits are located once found warning signs or labels must be posted workers need to know the location hazards and protective measures must not permit work near electric circuits unless the worker is protected by de-energizing the circuit and grounding it guarding it effectively by insulation other means maintaining safe separation de-energize circuits and equipments must be locked or tagged out no metal ladders for or near electrical work no wet hands when plugging or unplugging cords or equipment no raising or lowering tools by the cart unless equipment is designed for it cannot be used in damp and wet locations